I'm going to share my thoughts on the old school three fund portfolio and how my three fund portfolio blows that out of the water with data to back it up. And then I'm going to explain how I'd set up the actual percentage allocation in one's 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and above. With historical data, I'll prove my points and show how one could get much better returns while also staying safe during a market downturn by using my new format. Until recently, it was held that the old school three fund portfolio was your best bet. I agree that a three fund portfolio is great and it's so simple, but mine has a little twist. Now this is one of those videos that you definitely want to watch only when you're ready to learn because this thing is going to be packed full and it may be a little bit longer, but a ton of research hours went into bringing you this heat. There's also been a rumor spreading around that you need to diversify as much as possible and that's the only way that you can set up a successful portfolio. So let's start with that. Under this logic, if you live in a climate where it's 100 degrees in the summer and 30 degrees in the winter, you should probably just always wear two or three layers of clothing. As far as market cycles go, I'm sure you all know that we usually hit about 10 years or so of good market conditions and then have a bad year or two to correct and then back to growth. So why would it be logical to set up a portfolio all around safety during that short period, but keep it that way during good market conditions? Making it so that you can't take advantage of all the highest highs. This would be exactly like saying that 330 days out of the year it's going to be over 100 degrees and only 30 days it's going to be very cold. But just in case every single day you still have to wear a jacket in case it's one of those days that's cold. By diversifying just so that you have an asset class that's rumored to be safer and supposedly just balances out your portfolio you're doing just this. Especially since we have the data and now we can be smarter. But Professor G, Ray Dalio, and Dave Ramsey, and other people like this are very smart, and they say to diversify a bunch. You are correct. They are very smart, and what else are they? Very rich. In some regards, it's helpful to listen to the advice of the rich, but in some cases, it might be a good idea to question why they are saying it this way. Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, and Cristiano Ronaldo are some of the best athletes to ever play their respective sport, but I would submit that they would make terrible coaches. Someone who's truly at the top of the sport and has been for their entire life is just different. They've always had it, so they're out of touch with what it's like for normal humans to shoot a basketball or dribble a soccer ball. Each one of them could barely be tolerated by teammates for this same reason. They expect the same greatness that they're putting out and only know that level. Similarly, these incredibly rich fund managers and finance gurus have so much money and have had so much money for so long that the way they need to invest has everything to do with preserving capital and not necessarily increasing it, especially if there's a chance they could lose it. So they're playing defense where most of us are looking to build our net worth up. The crazy thing is that if these incredibly rich people had been using my format, they would be even richer. So the original three fund portfolio is a large amount in to US stocks or an ETF like VTI or VU. Then a much smaller amount of that portfolio into international stocks or an ETF like VXUS. And then finally, a portion of that portfolio into bonds or a bond ETF like BND. The way to invest in this three fund portfolio would then be to increase the amount of bonds and decrease the amount of stocks and international stocks as you get closer to retirement age because you want more stability and you wanna take down the risk. Obviously, when you're getting closer to or actually living in retirement aid, it's much more about safety and stability, and so you definitely do want to take it more serious, and you don't want to risk any of that money. So while I agree with the strategy and the overall hypothesis of this portfolio, the problem is that up until now, I haven't really heard anybody challenging the actual funds within the portfolio to hit that strategy. I feel like my solution is stronger with higher upside and by keeping keeping it just as safe. I did a full breakdown on this in this video here that I'll also link down below for you to go to after this because I'm going to share my thoughts briefly now, but it would definitely behoove you to understand the more in-depth version if you're serious about building wealth long-term.
platform. So the overall strategy to the three fund portfolio is very important for you to understand. So here are the basics. One, that you have a fundamental or foundational ETF of great US companies in order to have a moderately safe exposure to US stocks in a broad index. Two, that you have exposure to an international market because these companies are different than the US companies in the other part of your portfolio, but also that this is supposedly your highest risk section and you take on high risk to hopefully get high reward in these emerging markets. Three, this is your safe section. Nice, safe, stable bonds that won't really rise but shouldn't really fall. They'll produce a little bit of a cash flow in the form of a dividend and they should keep everything nice and safe. All that sounds great, but let's do better while keeping the same focus. In my new three fund portfolio, for number one, I completely agree with number one from the old three fund portfolio. I think that you should have a foundational ETF, something like a broad index of US companies that are very, very strong, that's why I absolutely love VU, or you could have VTI in this area. Number two is where we start to change it up. Remember that here the idea was it's okay to have a little bit higher risk because we're hopefully getting that higher reward. Now, yes, I need to point out that old school three fund portfolio purists will definitely say the other part of this is to diversify so that we get outside of the United States and just have international funds as well. So that we're highly diversified outside of the United States just in case. Just in case what? What big company in the United States is not doing business internationally? Most, if not all Fortune 500 companies are multinational, meaning that they are taking market share from these international countries and very much crushing it. Now, when this old three fund portfolio was first theorized, the internet was still dial up and AOL was the biggest player. This was a dramatically different time for business. And as soon as the internet made it so easy to reach across borders, everything changed. So save the comments in the comment section about how this isn't optimally diversified and that it's all US companies. Because if you do the research, you'll see that globalization among these companies has been their strategy for years and they have accomplished it. So in this section, I definitely want to pick a better high reward growth ETF that's still something moderately safe and has a low fee. And for that, my favorite growth ETFs are VUG, SCHG, and QQQM. Just to drive that point home harder, if you had invested $100,000 10 years ago and picked what the old school version suggests, which would be VXUS, which had an annualized return over those 10 years of 4.58%, today you'd be at $156,489. If you were to pick QQQ, your 100,000 will have turned into 480,682 in the same time period, making almost $330,000 more just picking the right fund. I feel like I can stop the video here. I'm not going to, but I feel like I can. Okay, so for the third part of the portfolio, this one's even more bonkers in my mind. Number three is all about safety, reliable returns, and cash flow. For me, this is a solid dividend ETF and my favorite is SCHD. One of the biggest reasons I'm so certain on this is because the old school three fund portfolios section on this with bonds was supposedly there to keep you safe and keep you hedged from a market downturn. Meaning that if stocks dropped, hopefully the bonds would stay stable or even rise a little bit and that should keep your portfolio from dropping too much. So let's challenge that real quick and look at one of the most famous bond ETFs, Vanguard's BND. Over the past year, during this market downturn in 2023 and 2022, it's down 10.84%. That's down worse than the S&P 500 over the same period and during a market downturn. So let's look at SCHD for the past year and it's only down 1.3%. This is what I would have expected the bond ETF to be doing. Now, just as important as defensive, let's look at the offense. For BND, the 10-year return of an average of 1.4% per year with a dividend yield of over 4%, which is definitely nice. For SCHD, however, the return over 10 years is an average of 13.3% per year and a dividend yield currently of about 3.4%. The dividend of BND is definitely higher than SCHD, but the amount of money that your money would have grown to by putting it into SCHD 
would have grown 13 times more than BND. Would you rather have 4% of $1,000 or 3.4% of $13,000? So the three fund portfolio that I've invented is one foundational ETF such as VTI or VU, one growth ETF such as SCHG, VUG or QQM, and then one dividend ETF such as SCHD or VYM. For all age groups that I discuss moving forward, I would be very comfortable with this in my portfolio. And we go over this type of question every every couple weeks in our private live Zoom over in the Patreon group, along with group chats every day and important stock updates as well. If you wanna be a part of a solid community of investors just trying to navigate this crazy landscape and be able to directly chat with me anytime you want, sign up today. Now usually these type of videos start with the youngest and then go to the oldest when we're looking at different portfolios, but sorry kiddos, y'all gonna respect your elders today with this one. I'm doing this on purpose though, because I know how you TikTok kids are once you find the information you think you need, then you're out. But you actually need to know what my thoughts are for each age group because you don't want to just pick a portfolio and then keep it that way for the rest of your life. You're going to want to change it up based on your age and you'll see why in a second. So the first one on the list is going to be retired age. And that's not an actual age because you could be retired at 30. The idea here is if you're using your investments to cover all of your living expenses, then technically you're retired. And now if you are retired, by this definition, then it means that you are very much concerned with safety since this is your livelihood. Now, the common misconception that I hear is, oh, I'm at retirement age. Hopefully I have $2 million so that I can live on that the rest of my life. Wrong thinking. You only have to live on the amount that you need per year. And the rest can just continue to grow and cook. It's not like, oh, I hit retirement and now that's the end of growth. That's the end and that's just my money that hopefully it sustains me for the rest of my life. So if you have $1 million in your portfolio and you decide to take out $60,000 because you figure you need $5,000 per month to live on that year. Great, you'll still have $940,000 in your account. And for that year, if it grows at the statistical market average of 10%, you'd actually end that year with $1,034,000, and that's with you taking out $60,000. Anyway, in retirement age, you do need to focus a lot more on safety. When looking at market cycles, we see that a market downturn typically can last one to two years. During that time, you wouldn't necessarily want to be taking money out of your investments because you don't want to sell when stocks drop. So if it was me, I'd have three years worth of living expenses saved up in a high yield savings account by this point. It just sits there, collects a little bit of interest, but doesn't get used unless you need it, and hopefully you just never need it. This way, your money can stay in that three fund portfolio and continue to grow at its most optimal when the market's good. And if the market drops, then you can just wait it out by using the money in your high yield savings account and you don't have to pull from it at a time that you definitely don't want to take money out. At this stage of life, I'd set up my portfolio as such. 50% in a dividend ETF, which is the safest, 40% in the foundational ETF, which again is pretty safe, and then 10% in a growth ETF with three years worth of cash in my high yield savings account. The next age group is 10 years from retirement. That's those of you that are probably 50 to 60 years old, most likely. For you, you probably still have one full market bull cycle left, and I want you to take every advantage of it possible. If it was me, I'd have 1.5 years worth of living expenses saved in a high yield savings account, and then my portfolio would be as follows. 40% in that dividend ETF, 30% in the foundational ETF and 30% in the growth ETF. Now, if you're 20 years from retirement, that's those of you that are probably 40 to 50 years old. You are in your prime as far as earning wages, but you also are probably spending a lot of money with growing families and other life events. I'd still suggest 1.5 years worth of living expenses in a high yield savings account for you here as safety is still very important at this stage of life and will set you up for success in the next stage of life. My portfolio at this age would be 50 50% in the foundational ETF, 25% in the dividend ETF, and 25% in the growth ETF. There's a big difference here in that I cut down a bunch from the dividend ETF. The biggest reason for this is that at this age, you'll definitely be growing that portfolio and it will have already been growing, hopefully, from when you were a little bit younger. And the dividends are probably something that you're not using to live off of yet because you're probably just reinvesting that for that dividend snowball, which is very smart. But if this 
this is in a brokerage account, then those dividends are going to be taxed. And since now your portfolio hopefully has grown a bunch, those dividends are now a little bit more substantial. And so the taxes on those might be a little bit more than you should be worried about at this point. At this point, it just may be smarter for your portfolio to grow in ways that aren't being taxed every year. And then later on, when you get older, you sell portions of that and put it into the dividend ETF. And that seems complicated, but we'll work through it as you get older. If all you're investing is in a Roth IRA alone, then you don't have to worry about those taxes. But I'm hoping that most of you are maxing out a Roth IRA and then also adding to a brokerage account so that you're investing even more than that $6,500 to $7,500 every year. So now for my third 30 to 35 year olds. You have a lot of life left and now you're finally making some money. First and foremost, make sure you don't spend all your money. I know you can't see or fathom retirement age or getting old, but it's gonna happen and you're gonna wish you would have started now. Secondly though, take some risks. I'd say a portfolio of an even 33% in each is great here, or even tip the scales a bit and go 40% growth, 40% dividend to get that started to get built up, and then 20% foundation. This is how I'm investing right now in my personal portfolio, especially since that growth ETF is down so much. So now, if you are 20 or so, first of all, congratulations making it this far. I mean, I am a professor, I know your tricks, I'm sure you just skipped to this section, but if you didn't, good job. At 20, it's very important that you understand everything in this video and the reason why I even have to make this type of video in the first place. There's a lot of conflicting information out there, and so you need to do your research and then focus on building that net worth. Try not to spend all your money and try to solidify a budget early on in life, get all of your debts paid off, and then start building this portfolio. If I was 20, the way I'd invest would be 33% of my money in each of the three funds and just get that money in like clockwork each and every month. You just need to build those positions. In my opinion, they are all equal as far as most important at this age. You just need a large enough stake in them so you take it seriously. Stay away from the flashy objects like investing in small cap or Tesla or the latest semiconductor or cannabis stock and just stick to the plan. For anyone who's made it this far and wants to know the order in which I recommend how you invest overall and the steps to get to true financial freedom, watch this video now and let me know which step you're on.